All right. Well, we are at 1.30, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get us started. Um, hello. Welcome, everybody. My name is Aaron Robles. I am on the steering committee for the Indiana Arts Homecoming. Um, thank you all for showing up. Uh, we'll start with just a few kind of basic rules that we're following today. Um, please turn off your videos and keep yourself muted during the presentation. Um, also, I want to make sure that everyone kind of knows what the Q&A situation is. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat throughout uh, Emily's presentation. I will be curating a few questions throughout and we'll have a few minutes at the end for her to answer some Q&A. So as we go through it, please ask Q&A, um, ask your questions. I will ask her a few and we'll see how many we can get through. But feel free to ask as many questions as you want and we will go from there. So um, we'll move on to introductions and get this ball rolling sooner than later. But um, Emily and I have only known each other a few short months. And in those few short months, man, we have become really, really, really close. Um, you know, when someone really matches your energy and helps you just discover so many things about yourself, it's a very beautiful thing. Um, I actually got to know her much better when I did her rebranding. We just got a new logo done. We, um, she got a new website done as well. So we got really close with that. Um, she's authentic, she's real, she values heritage. And for me, as a first generation Mexican immigrant, um, she's helped me discover a lot about my own heritage. So the conversations between us are absolutely wonderful. She is filled with so many stories. Um, so without further ado, I'll get out of the way and pass this on to Emily. But if everyone could help me welcome Emily Guerrero, founder and CEO of Machica Arts. Go ahead, take it away. Thank you, Aaron, for such a lovely introduction. I just am so grateful to be here. I want to say thanks to the Indiana Arts Homecoming for creating space at the table for diverse audiences and diverse presenters. I just think it's so important for our community to raise up everyone. We all have so much to bring to the table. And I'm glad to be here during Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, which also leads into the next really important uh, time for Mexica, Aztecas, Toltecs, um, all of the different indigenous people of what is now called Mexico. And I have decided to dedicate my business, Mexica Arts, to uh, tribute my ancestors who worked so hard to lift us up and we stand up on their shoulders as they made major sacrifices for us to be who we are and where we are today as a community, as individuals, as families. And I dedicate my business of storytelling and installation art for my grandchildren because I think it's so important that we keep these traditions alive. And we do that by living them and by sharing those stories, as well as uh, demonstrating the installations of our traditions. And aren't you glad we're here that we've arrived in your community because where would you be without Taco Tuesday or tamales or tequila or folkloric dancers and mariachis what about that salsa, chips, and guacamole? Each culture, each heritage has something wonderful to um, contribute to the community, which makes us a much more diverse and celebratory community when we raise each other up and we take the time to live amongst each other, learn amongst each other, and support each other in our schools, in our churches, in our workplaces, so that we can be fully present and authentically ourselves with ha out having to hide who we are. And we can only do that if we do that for each other and not only for ourselves, but for others. So I want to um, try and fit 3000 years of history into the next 20 minutes. And so I will probably be talking rather fast uh, like the rap singers and just keep it, keep the story going. <laughs> So what will happen is it's important for you to know that we're not going to get everything in in 20 minutes, but what we are going to do is a synopsis, which is just a little taste of what the Day of the Dead, the Dia de los Muertos, is about. Um, I promised you that we would be making paper flowers, and that will be part of this presentation. Um, this is a replica of the pig, the flower called the Sempasuchil, the marigold. It grows naturally and abundantly in what is now known the Mexico City area. That was Azteca, the land of the Atzlan, the Aztec um, government society. And in 
for thousands and thousands of years to honor your elders, to honor those who have deceased, to recognize that they're an important part of who we are, our heritage, our foundation, our traditions, they use this time, which was usually a month, it has now been reduced to two days. But nonetheless, this, what we know historically of this tradition having started 3,000 years ago is a fragment of information because when the Spanish conquerors came to what is now known as Mexico in the late 15th century, 1500s, um, unfortunately, they conquered and they just tried to literally, physically, spiritually, intellectually destroy the culture. But because we had elders and people with long memories and the tradition of storytelling, our traditions were able to stay alive. So that's why I think as a storyteller, it's important for me to be here as a grandmother, as, a, as an elder in the community, to do my part to keep bringing this forward until the next generation is willing to take the baton and keep the traditions going. I also think it's important that we share our culture because originally there were two gods and their names are in Nahual, the original language of the region. So Mik Lanti Huatli was the god of protecting the sacred bones and his wife Miteca Sihuatl was the goddess. They protected the bones of those who died and they believed that those bones were sacred and that if someone were to steal and run away with the bone, they could actually start an entire new society. So with so much of our stories having been destroyed by the conquerors and the remnants that are left in the sculptures, in the pyramids, in the recipes, in the whispering of the stories behind um, closed doors because if people were to continue those traditions and the conquerors were made aware of it they tortured or killed people so i want you to understand the importance of how deeply sacred having tre protected these treasure stories and traditions have come through thousands and thousands of years and with the impression or the arrival of the Spaniards in the Judeo-Christian um, ways, there was a merging of the cultures and it's called syncretism. So the Spaniards brought in the Judeo-Christian religion. So you will see um, images of saints, crosses and spiritual repli uh, replicas on people's ofrendas. Every ofrenda is unique and uh, very personal when it's in our homes because they are our loved ones. When you see installations out in the community, they are personal, but they are public. But nonetheless, every essence, every ofrenda has a beautiful spiritual essence. When you stand before it and you breathe in the essence of the stories of that person who's presented to you in a picture and in the things that represent them. So this flower, the marigold, has an, a, a fragrance to it. And we believe that the fragrance is what brings the spirits home. And that the cemetery, the Pantheon, is abundantly, lavishly decorated with these marigolds. Um, their petals are sprinkled from the Pantheon to the house, or from the house to the Pantheon. And you'll see these flower petals everywhere so the spirits can find their way home or from the Pantheon to home. And so these flowers carried a lot of significance in that way. And the fact that they are, if we look at uh, the scientific part of this, uh, you, um, they have a natural pesticide in them, so they also reduce the number of insects and when people are bringing their food and their flowers and that deters any insects. So they serve that purpose as well. So if you have cut your paper into, I suggested a 10 inch square so that you would be able to get a medium sized 
flower. It's a little easier to work on a larger scale to begin with. If you want to make them smaller, you just cut your square smaller and smaller until you get smaller flowers or larger. Uh, if you go larger, I would recommend more than five pages so that you would have the fullness. But for a medium, what I'm going to do is teach you an accordion style. So your paper is right before you. And I generally just fold it over about an inch, inch and a half, and I give it a crease. I flip it over and just repeat till I get to the other end of the page. So you're going to flip, crease, flip, crease, until you get to the other side. And you may remember making these as fans when you were once in an after school program or hot summer day and you take a newspaper and you fold it and it turns into this. <laughs> well this, once it's folded in half, you just find your halfway point, more or less, and that's where your tie is going to go. I'm using a um, pipe cleaner because they're easy to fold and they have that nice soft feeling. I'm putting it in the middle, I'm folding it over, and I am going to just twist this end of it. This is something so simple to do with children um, and, you know, for different celebrations. So now that we have this stage tied, pull, pull, you just start from the first page and you lift up one page at a time until each tissue page is up toward the center. And as you can see, it's already taken shape toward a half flower. It's a very simple, easy activity to do with friends and family. It's a wonderful way to add festivity to your parties. Uh, in this case, we're offering it to the celebration of lives um, through our Day of the Dead around the ofrenda. But in our family, we have created these flowers for weddings and for birthday parties and living a joyful life with color, texture, and ta-da, you have a miracle. So it's very easy to just kind of tuck, move them and get them the way you want, but I also have taken scissors and just snipped into the paper and created uh, little petals so that you can actually spread them out a little further. And there we have it. This is your flower demonstration. There are times when you don't have all the materials on hand. I took five sheets of tissue out of my tissue box. I connected it with a bobby pin in the middle or a bread tie. And this is a tissue paper. So it's possible to do this creation with other materials, but as long as it has the ability to fold, you can continue to use this decoration. So this is just one piece of the ofrenda that has a lot of rich symbolism for the Day of the Dead. And I'm gonna step away and show you my personal ofrenda in my home. I have just begun this. I have another two weeks of bringing family forward, bringing pictures together, and also preparing for the meal that I will be cooking um, to bring my family together so that we can talk about those who have departed, those we love that we'll never forget. And this is how the oral tradition and the oral stories and the remembrances of our family carries forward. So I'm going to step away and you can see my ofrenda and it has a certain magical essence when all of the candles are lit. You have to be careful if you're going to light candles. You want to have glass candles to protect the flame because as you can see with a lot of items on the ofrenda, you don't want to have the um, opportunity for uh, accidental fire. So I really highly encourage that you have voltives and the, fl the flame down below the glass. But where you can, um, this is a portal you'll see that these are my paper flowers. You will see that I have put monarchs, oops, I'm trying to look for the camera, monarchs. 
These monarchs symbolize the departed souls, and these are very important to our culture. Um, with the Day of the Dead, we start with November 1st, which is the Dia de los Niños. And this is a very, very sacred and sentimental time because as we come into the world, we know there's a cycle and a circle of life. We come and we leave, but we do not know when. And when we lose children, that is a sacredness that many people do not have words for, but the emotions are deep. And so the Dia de los Niños is November 1st, and we will bring out pictures of our children and our loved ones who have departed, and we will put up toys so that they will have toys to play with when they come. We will put out candy. We will bring forth the alebrijas. The alebrijas are our spirit animals that travel and teach, show us the way to and from land of Mitlan. We also have the sugar skulls and the sugar skulls this is a beautiful sugar skull made in a local bakery here in town and these are edibles when they're smaller and they are a work of art and they bring joy and candy and festivity we are talking about celebrating our lives and um there are moments of tears and there are moments of music and food and drinking it's because life is important to celebrate while you're here and this is a handmade one i have i paint these individually and each of them have a different um, color design you will find tiny little um, replicas of oops different galakas these are uh caricature, caricatures this one is a guy with a boom box and he's got a mohawk um, this is adding to the festivity that all people, no one, um, everyone is represented. And we're not Halloween because Halloween is based on the uh, Celtic tradition of hiding from the spirits and uh, the evil spirits and wearing masks where they don't recognize you and um, trying to escape them. But the Dia de los Muertos is really a beautiful, beautiful tradition of honoring the ancestors and those that we love who have died and to welcome them home and to celebrate life with flowers and food and drink and all of those wonderful things. It has become a real pop culture um, tradition and holiday as well. You will see sugar skulls in um, Halloween decorations, or you'll see that in Europe, people are celebrating with uh, dressing like La Katrina. And La Katrina is somewhat a spinoff of the goddess who protects the sacred bones. When in 1910, Jose Posada, who was an artist and a journalist, and uh, did not agree with what was happening with the very, very wealthy who were feasting, but negligent of all the people who were poor and suffering and starving. And there was the indigenous women who were trying to be more Spaniard and light skin, and they would put makeup on to make them skin, their skin lighter, and they would wear European clothing, and they would have the big hats, and they would go to the parties. And he would remind everybody, look, your culture is important to be who you are authentically. And those who are trying to masquerade as someone else, you're not fooling us. And those who are wealthy, we'll meet you on the other side because at the end of the day, we all have a start and a beginning, we all die. And so he used the Katrina as a way of a caricature to make fun of the very wealthy and their illusion that they're you know, above everyone else when we are all at the end of the day, very equal. In the 1947, Diego Rivera, who was a famous muralist, uh, created a big mural of a promenade in the park, and he revived the Katrina and that mural as well. So today you'll see Katrinas um, here and there and everywhere, and um, I brought her into um, performance art several years ago when I dressed in her um, hat and clothes and I had a sugar skull face and came into the art museum in acting La Katrina. Um, and it was just a lot of fun and people want to take pictures with me and it's bringing life to those stories. Uh, we have El Catrin, um, Palermo Galindo is one of our community leaders. He was El 
Katrine as well, and he took on the male uh, clothing. Uh, Jose Posada, he represented, he did a great job of that as well. So we try and um, share our culture and it's still very relevant today because if we're not in that place with some of the realities, the harsh realities of the 1% being very negligent of the rest of the people who are suffering without healthcare and a pandemic crisis, over 200,000 people have departed. You know, life is precious and we need to recognize that um, we're here by moment and in that moment, let's make the world a better place. So with that, I am just very happy to be here to share very quickly. I'm gonna take my pointer and just show you a few things here. Um, some people would say this is the Virgen Guadalupe or a replica of the Virgin Mary. But we see her as the Matsin. She is the Aztec goddess, the mother of earth, and who um, represents fertility and the rebirth of life, the rebirth of plants, and all that makes us vibrant to be alive. We have fresh flowers you can pick from your garden. I have, um, we have candles to represent the um, elements. We have water which we bring to the ofrenda so that those who are journeying, who are thirsty would have a drink. We have salt, which is part of the purification that will be on the ofrenda. I dedicate my ofrenda by lighting incense, copal if you have it, to create the sacred space. And then um, my papel picado, which is you have seen are usually cut squares of paper lined up in banners and each little square has an intricate uh, scene of life in it and the papel picado helps you to see and feel the wind the fourth spirit so in the indigenous way we honor the elements of earth with these you'll see pictures of my sister and my dad and his parents and my mom and my auntie my mom and my mother-in-law these are people who have departed this is a great grandmother from the 1900s I have um, this dancer here because music is so important in our life and dancing is so important. I have maracas for the replication of the music. So we have many elements. And as I said, each of friend is personal and different. So Erin, I'm not sure how I'm doing on time here. And um, you're good on we, time. Let's go yeah. ahead with the questions. All right, well, wonderful. I have a few questions keyed up here. Uh, the first one here is from Benghazi Rogers. Hope I said your name right. Uh, but they say, I will be making an ofrenda this year for the first time. Any tips on, one to, on what to include? They also asked about the significance of the salt and water, which you just covered. Yes, each, as I said, each ofrenda is very personal. Um, in my tradition, because we were so far from home and all of these items weren't available to us, my grandmother would create her own ofrenda and she had this little travel trunk in her bedroom and she decorated with a beautiful lace cloth. She put some candles. I failed to mention that we also put money on our ofrenda so that there will be abundance and wealth and we would share our wealth with others. So each ofrenda is as you want to make it in Ghazi. It's your ofrenda and you put there what you think is important to you because it's a very personal space. It's creating a sacred space for your loved ones. Each year it changes a little too. You'll bring those things out, you'll bring other things out. A follow-up question from Ngazi as well is where they can find um, sugar skulls. Okay, so I really want to encourage supporting local artists and people of color artists. If you Google in your neighborhood Latino Mexican bakeries, they generally make them there with the pan de muerto, which is a really buttery soft bread that has a cross on it of skulls, bones. Um, I know it does, it sounds like what, but Believe me, it's delicious. So you can go to your local Mexican bakeries and find these items or, you know, um, please, please support local artisans and let them be authentic. I know you'll go to Target and Walmart and you'll get different pieces, but please don't let that be your whole ofrenda. Make your own flowers, bring your own flowers and make it very personal. Wonderful. This next question is from Fernando Lozando, and his question is, um, have you ever had a chance to visit the Fort Wayne Museum? 
Yes, I was on the original um, committee. Paloma Galindo brought it to us first. A couple of years later, the director asked if a committee of cultural ambassadors would come together. I served on the committee for six years, almost seven, I think. Um, and so we brought that forward as community. Together, we built that. And I'm so happy that the tradition continues because it's a public space where people can see the love and the um, creation of sacred space for loved ones. We have uh, another question from Ngazi, and this is actually a really good one. Why was Dia de los Muertos reduced to only two days? How were oh. the original 30 days celebrated? Well, it goes back to syncretism. The Spaniards um, really forced their religion on the Aztec people, and they aligned it, and they moved the date from, I think it was middle of the summer, to uh, this time of the year. And they reduced it to All Saints Day and All Souls Day. So they tried to make their holidays fit with the indigenous traditions, and they reduced it to those two days. But, you know, in some of these stories, the indigenous people were the slaves that had to build the churches. They took their own sacred spaces apart. They forced them to. They used those stones to build those pyramids. I mean, I'm sorry, those Spanish churches you'll see throughout Mexico. But they also were very um, bright in creating the Nagua, which is the belly button at the front of the altar where people have to cross for communion. And they also have put their own little Aztec images behind the um, big saints that were the Catholic saints. And so when they were forced to pray to these saints and images, they knew that their own um, indigenous gods and goddesses were represented there, but it was a very secretive act that they did on their part. Thank you. Uh, this next one is from Sandy Appleby, and she asked, have you been to the Pilsen Hispanic Center in Chicago? It is wonderful and where I saw my first ofrenda. Oh, I'm so glad that you mentioned the National Mexican Museum of Art. I grew up in Chicago. Those are my roots. And I am very familiar. I go every year. This last year was the 30th year that they had the Dia de los Muertos. And those ofrendas are over the top, breathtaking. I encourage everyone to go. Uh, parking is a little bit of a challenge, so try and get there when they open. But please, there's a virtual opportunity to see their ofrendas this year. And they have honored Black Lives Matter. Um, we will be in the community honoring Ruth. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, along with Frida Kahlo. They will be featured. I am an installation artist for the Creative Women of the World, downtown Fort Wayne. And I will be working with Sophia's Portico, and we will be honoring Brianna Taylor and Vanessa Gillian, two frontline warrior women who we lost this year um, to violence. So we will be lifting up their spirit and honoring their lives here in Fort Wayne. Right, and this will be the last question, and we have a hard stop at two. So, um, what are some of the most uh, some some of the most common misconceptions of Dia de los Muertos? Well, that it, it's Halloween tradition; it's not Halloween, and or that people think that it is um, calling back spirits, um, and some people don't believe that that's a, a right thing to do, but. I am honoring my ancestors' traditions. I will choose to keep my ancestors alive. Their spirits know their way coming and going. Um, there is no way that you're trapping anybody here. Um, it is really about the memories. So in closing, I wanna thank you for all these wonderful questions. Uh, there are, there's not enough time probably to go through all these misconceptions, but thank you for the question. I want to say again, thank you for the people who supported me. I want to thank Aaron for his logo design, Jake Sanchez, who was my web designer, and, and Ghazi Rogers, who's here to support me today, who did amazing media and marketing support for me. So please support your people of color artists and entrepreneurs who are working so hard to be present in the community and to contribute. Well, all right, I think that is it. Thank you everyone for the questions. I did put um, Emily's contact information in the chat as well as her website. So please reach out for any more questions or comments. And I think with that, we are totally done. Emily, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much too. Nice to see everyone out there. Bye. All right, take care. <laughs>